What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we get to review a good 3D printer. The last few printers I've reviewed have not impressed me, not been very good. This one has all the features you want and a reasonable price tag. Kind of impressive. Let's get right into it. First off, let's get the disclaimer out of the way. This was sent to me for free. I wasn't paid for this review. Once we get to the cons section, you will know there are downsides to this printer and I'm gonna let you know about them. First off, I think we should cover the specs of this. Build volume, that's where I always like to start. 220 millimeters, 220 millimeters, 250 millimeters. Pretty standard build volume. That Z is nice and tall. You can build a little bit taller than you can in the X and Y volume. Next up, I think there's three big things that were really impressive to see on any specs list. First off is direct drive extruder. It's just good to see a solid direct drive extruder with dual gears. It's just a good extruder on there. Next up, auto bed leveling. That's great to see on any printer. It's almost the end of 2022. I think every 3D printer should have auto bed leveling. So it's nice to see it come stock with the firmwares already ready, out of the box, ready to go. I think that is the mod that I most recommend for most other 3D printers. So it's nice to see it comes with it stock. And the third big headlining feature is this spring steel PEI coated build plate. PEI coated sheets just work well. That's what happens with prints. After it cools down, they just slide right off. Works amazing, and it is flexible, so if a, you had a larger print that was sticking a little bit more, you flex it a little bit, it'll pop right off. Also, it's nice that this is magnetic, so you can use any other magnetic spring steel plates and use any surface you want. Also, I printed off a scraper to be able to scrape up these parts, and a printed scraper won't damage the build plate. I think it came with a metal one, but I would recommend printing out one of these plastic ones. That way you're not gonna damage that PEI coating. Other great features on here, dual part cooling fans, so it'll cool the parts from both sides. You get really good overhangs in that way. Touch screen on here makes the menu really good. Longer has a really good menu system here. Just because it's touch screen doesn't mean the menu is gonna be good, but in this case it is good. For example, that last Focus Odin 3D printer I reviewed, that one was touch screen, but the menu system wasn't well laid out. There were dead ends in the menu system, a lot of downsides to it. This one is simple, easy to use, really great. The printer also comes with belt tightening screws on the X and Y axes. That's really important. You want your belts to be nice and snug, kind of like a guitar string tight. Not too tight, but also not too loose. So you can tighten or loosen those. Great to see that feature built in. I feel like all of these mods are things that for so long were the most upgraded mods on things. People would add belt tightening screws. People would add auto bed leveling. People would add dual part cooling fans, different beds. These, this comes with it all stock, built in, direct drive. That's a really common upgrade. You don't have to on this printer. It comes with all of these things. So I don't need to make a review of top five things you should upgrade about this printer because they come built in. And it all comes at a price I was incredibly surprised by. When I was reviewing this, I wasn't sure what the final price of it was. They didn't tell me yet. I was expecting $400, $450. The final price is $300 right now. And maybe more if they give me any coupons. I will have them linked in the description down below. So all this for $300, I would just recommend, if you're looking for a printer in that price range, just get this one. It's really good. Prints well. Next up, I think we should cover the prints to show you how well it printed. This 3D Benchy might be the greatest 3D Benchy I've ever printed. Sure, it's printed in a matte filament, so it is going to hide some of your defects a little bit better, but it just turned out great. All the overhangs look perfect. All the little details are so good on here. The bottom always looks good on a textured PEI coated sheet. So it's always a good sign when you start with a perfect Benchy on the stock Cura profile. And next up, we have this E3D torture test. This is a great test of your 3D printer. It prints up this little rim on the edge and then it prints a thin spider web. And then on top of that thin webbing, it has to print an entire spider on top of it. Really difficult to do and this one handled it so well. I was incredibly impressed with the stock Cura profile. I didn't change anything on either of those. That's the prints you get out of it. So the stock Cura profile works great. I think I did change for it to not print on a raft, to print with a skirt instead of a raft. That's a minor change I do on every profile. So now that you know this printer has all the amazing specs and can print really well, what are the downsides? Well, there's two big downsides. First one is the firmware. Second one 
is print speed. It struggles at high speeds. Here are some close-up examples when you try to push the Cura Profile print speed. I got all of these little blobs and zits when it tries to do a retraction travel move. It seems like it just makes a really large Z seam on your prints when printing at higher than stock speeds. And I've tried everything, all the common things at least, to try to remove those defects. I will contact Longer to see if they have any solutions for getting higher speeds out of there. If I do get this printing fast, it will of course be featured in some short videos. Subscribe so you don't miss those. But for now, it's not a speed demon. It prints fairly slow, but reliable prints, I think it's a balancing act of how fast do you want to print and how much are you losing in reliability. And there's kind of a nice benefit of it prints slow, but it's really reliable. And when I do print at the stock speeds, I haven't had a failed print at all. The second big downside is the firmware and how slow the default speeds are for probing the bed. It fully probes the bed every single print and it pretty slowly moves between the points there. So the time between when you press the start print button and the filament really coming out to starting the print is kind of a long time. And it is really nice that this print is reliable, so I can say start print and then just leave. But when you're going through and trying to tune the Cura profile, this is how much time it takes between you pressing the button and the filament really coming out to start the print. So if you're doing testing and wanting to change a bunch of Cura profile settings, that can just be really annoying to add that much time onto every test case you're running. It would be really nice, and I'm not sure if Marlin even has this feature. I know you can do it in Clipper, and I think I'll just have to turn this into Clipper where you can have it probe the bed and then save that bed profile to memory and then not have to probe it every single time you want to start a print. And then maybe once every couple weeks or once a month, you can rerun that bed probe, resave that profile if, thing, if these bed wheels slowly are shifting. But for the most part, you don't need to probe it for every single print. Another downside, and it really is a cost cutting measure to keep it at this price point, is there's only one Z screw on the back here. It's over here, there's a Z lead screw. There's nothing on this side, so it's kind of just supported on this vertical arm here. That one I see as more of a cost-cutting measure. Usually cheaper printers will only have one Z lead screw and not two. Two Z screws will add more stability, but the prints have been turning out great, and you can really print great with one Z screw. And the last little nitpick I have is this whole setup up here. This uh, filament mount isn't the strongest, most stable thing, and then mounted in front of it is your filament runout detector. It's not bad, it totally works, it's just the one part that seems not as well built as everything else on the printer is. I also don't love the filament runout detector being kind of attached here. I mean, I don't love filament runout detectors in general. Most printers, I try to take it off or reflash the firmware without that enabled. It would have been best if it was mounted to the direct drive extruder, or if in the menu system here you could turn it off and then I could detach it, unplug it, take it off the entire system, and not have to worry about it. It's a system that works up here, it's just not as good as everything else on this printer. I love everything from here down, here up, it's kinda iffy for me. So that, I think, sums up everything you need to know about this printer. A lot of great things, a few downsides, and a great price to go with all of that. This is one of the best printers I've reviewed on this channel and definitely gets my stamp of approval. If you're looking for a beginner budget printer, I would highly recommend checking out this one. Maybe stepping up your price point from, yes, you can get printers in the $200 range, but usually you buy a $200 printer and then you add some upgrades to try to get it to a better printer. This one is $300, but comes with all of those upgrades built in and ready to go. So if you want a printer that you can take out of the box, assemble in 30 minutes, get going, making great prints. This is a great printer to have. I'm gonna keep it around and do a lot of prints on it. And if you're already subscribed to this channel, you will have seen some of my YouTube shorts. Has been using this printer for quite a while now. A lot of great Halloween prints were made on this printer. And if you're interested, I will have some links and maybe some coupon codes in the description down below. Let me know if you have any more questions or maybe something I forgot to mention about this printer. Let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, that seems to wrap it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.